Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, classmates. I'm Arion Joy Katnina, the first reporter of Module 4, Orthography, Writing, and Spelling. Before I start our topic, I have here a question. How was your writing of paragraph? Did you have any difficulty writing and the correct spelling of the word? In any language, spelling always poses as a problem to many. Incorrect spelling of the words may change their meaning. To properly convey the data, spelling is important. Now, I have here the objectives and the learning outcome. First is analyze the spelling of the word one's own mother tongue. Identify the rules in spelling in one's own mother tongue. And the last is written words correctly following the correct spelling rules. Now let's go to our topic. I have here the spelling rules used in Hiligaynon and our own first language. The first rule is spelling should be in accordance with the phonetic sound of. In Hiligaynon, they use the example Bursa and Simana. Since Simana has the same meaning with our first language, I use it also as an example. We use phonetic sound to make the word easy and maintain We use the E, A, uh, and a uh sound for these words para maklaro ngayon mas naiintindihan niya. Ngayon, asyaan, dapat na spelling. And the rule number two naman, use of O and U. So, when do we use the O and the U? So, letter A. If the first syllable of the word has O or U sound, U is usually used. In Hiligay nun, the example here is umpisa and uling. Nandiyan sa first syllable ang sound na U at U. I have here some example for us to understand better the rule. The word suman. Since it is in the first syllable the sound of O and U, we will use the letter U. Like the example here, the U ring and bunay. Pero kung mapapansin natin, it bunay, di ba? Mag, na, it yes talaga, it yes spelling, ha, store is O, pero there it nga asya. The correct spelling is U. The next is letter B. If the last syllable of the word has O or U sound, O is usually used, except when it precedes M, except when there is a U or O pattern and when the word has a grave of a circumflex accent. Letter O is used when the word has only O and U sound at the end of the syllable of the word and no other consonant will follow. I have here some example to criticize this idea. Now, the word kabu. In our own language, there's only one sound of O. There's only letter O at, and it is at the end. Okay, so there's no consonant will follow. Therefore, we use letter O O, not U. Just like this example, kuno, taku, and pito. Letter C, if a word has a she O or U sound, and the, fir the first and the second shall be U, and the last shall be O. The example here in Hiligaynon is tinutuyo. When the word has two or more sounds of O or U sound, letter U is used in the first, the second, or third syllable, and on the last syllable is letter O. For example, we have here the magturuto, which is often used in our teachers. Magturuto, there are three sounds of U, so the first two is U, but the last is O. Just like this example, Ginto Toyo and Pamoroko. Letter D, if the word has four U or U sound, the first three shall be U and the fourth shall be O. 
The example here in Ligay nun is pamuluyo. In letter D, pareha lang yung letter C. Kahit ilang syllable pa yan, the first, second, third, and fourth always be U. But the last syllable will always be O. Letter E. The terminal letter O is changed to U when a suffix is added to the word. The rule here is, when you add suffix to the word, we need to change the letter O to U. The example here in Hiligay ng the completo ha. Completo plus ha equals completo ha. So, the last syllable O yung value ay yung letter U. In our first language, example is luto plus the suffix on. If there rin na itong value ay yung O and yung letter U, ang kabase ito niya, lutun. Pero if we value ang yung letter U, ang kabase na, lutoon. So, rule number three. When a root word is repeated, the spelling is not changed. Bisang uro otruhan it word, it spelling di lagi yak mababago. Retain the spelling of the word even the syllable are repeated. Is our example here is guba guba, adlaw adlaw sunod sunod. The first syllable and the second syllable magparehas la. Pero di rin yung babaluan ang spelling. Okay, once the babaluan ang spelling, iba na it meaning. Here's the rule number four. Use a non-use of hyphen. There should be a hyphen between a consonant and a vowel. Only if it is to avoid confusion. Example is Louis A. Lui a in Hiligay nun and Lui a in our own dialect is the same meaning. And the same also the spelling. Letter B, a hyphen is necessary between two repeated words if they tell either similarity or likeness, intensity or repeated action. Note, root words which are composed of repeated syllable do not carry a hyphen. Example is huya huya. In hiligay nun, makahiya. So, o sa lahiya ka, word. And then, ha, ato naman, tsaka rit, karit. We are, baka na, gusto natin, nakikita natin, na gusto natin, wa, karit, karit. We use a hyphen there. At our C, a hyphen is necessary between the prefix and the proper noun. The example is ka on plus a equals kan a. Letter D, a hyphen is used as a replacement of vowel that is deleted. Example here in the guy is pili a. Pili hyphen and a. Pili a. The meaning is to choose, which is the same lahira. Ha, aton, daya, aton language. Pili, dash, and a. Last is, a hyphen is used between a root word and one vowel suffix in words or, or, of order or request. Tupad, balay. With meaning, neighbor, sapit na balay. That's all. Thank you. And Miss Colorado Wilderness Support.